So after hours of cross-referencing research on how many hours a player actually puts into a game before they'll just give up on it, I came to one conclusion. None of it mattered. Because the refund policy for a game is two hours and most players aren't willing to give it past that. So welcome to Refund or Rejoice with Trollgasm, where I review games in under two hours of playtime so you don't have to. Ever desire to be a master of balls in Second Life? Spearmancer, it's not Second Life. Wait, what? It's, it's not the same thing? Ever desire to be a Spearmancer in a virtual world akin to Dot .hack with the artistic style of Chrono Trigger? Well, in CrossCode, you can do that, and much more. So this game surprised me a lot. We're immediately greeted with an epic opening to a character called Shizuka conversing with an unknown individual. It always amuses me when games only partially hide these people, because later on I assume we'll see this person and immediately know it's them. The game starts out light, but does an amazing cut to some intense music and throws us right into the fighting. It uses freeze frame almost immediately to teach us the basics of combat, which is flow breaking, but it works here. I only point this out because you have to get used to being frozen mid-action, as within the first two hours of playing, this game likes to do that a lot. Oddly enough, they squeeze in two game mechanics immediately after this that seemingly aren't touched on again anytime soon that I could see. The first one being elemental weaknesses and the second being an ultimate AoE ability. These seem to have no other purpose than to get you hyped up for when they're introduced eventually. A weird flex, but okay. It wraps up this introduction by a jump cut to somewhere else and we are immediately greeted with a character that has a similar design to the original character we started as, albeit a different color palette and a few modifications. We're gonna dub them not Shizuka. Whether we're supposed to know this or not is anyone's guess. And immediately we're introduced to Mr. Exposition, we're gonna call him, because anytime you have a chance to figure out anything for yourself, he will be there to freeze your game and scream into your ear. Balls? What the, what? Why did he just say balls? We then get to go through an entire tutorial on how our character works, even though we just did a tutorial on how to fight with a whole different style than this character. After the second tutorial, we get to finally move around and immediately I see a lot of amazing detail and extra attention to details. Here I jump on Carla's computer and they remark how I shouldn't do that. Also I'm able to run around unnecessarily on these objects. Is it needed to progress the game? No. Do these small details make the game feel more intricate and encourage exploration? You're goddamn right. We get to then do, you guessed it, a third tutorial. Another one. This one is actually done pretty well. It helps introduce puzzle mechanics, but personally, I don't see why they couldn't have just been introduced and taught in future encounters, especially since Mr. Exposition exists. Like. I feel like when we run into these in the dungeon, they could be shown to us naturally. Oh well, moving on. The story is pretty bland at this point, and to hook us into the story, they really emphasize how much amnesia this character has, like they bring it up multiple times within the first hour. Eventually after running around the ship, talking to people, and introducing a cast of rather mid characters, we finally get to meet the first mildly interesting character, this chaotic blue guy who comes out of nowhere and just wants to destroy everything. So they want to destroy us, but before they do, they think they recognize not Shizuka, but they're not sure and not Shizuka can't talk and has amnesia. So we sure as hell don't know either. Cue boss battle, but before you get to fight, cue Mr. Exposition. Like, is this guy just like really lonely or something? Like, come on, man. During the boss fight, there's seemingly no iframes in the dodge, or maybe I just suck. I don't know. It, probably the latter. I probably just suck. The second attempt, I realize I can just ignore the mechanics of this fight by staying incredibly far away. Whether that's intended or I'm just outsmarting the game, I don't know. After this boss fight, we're met with some really well-made cutscenes, and I take back what I say about mid-tier character. The captain's actually kind of badass. Like, I kind of like this character. His design's pretty mid, but he, he himself, for a simple character, is pretty cool. And we are then forced to run for our lives. Being the cheeky gamer I am, I tried to game this for a while, but it was pretty watertight forcing me forward. And there's even one part where I struggled because of just the placing of the enemy just didn't seem quite right, and I died several times. I had to, like, get really creative. We're then met by a 
beautiful transition to this game's overworld. And did I mention the game's transitions are gorgeous? Like, really amazing for pixel art gorgeous. Like, look at all this. This is really good. So after the transition, we're greeted with cheery music that immediately perks you up and takes you out of the rather dramatic event that you just went through, and now you're in the game's island. This is where we begin to meet the actual palatable characters that have clearly had more design and thought put into them, and it's at this point I begin to realize you now know who the main characters and side characters are, by who's covered in soot or not. It's like a weird choice, but it works here. But does this mean this guy isn't a main character, or is everyone in this game just a witness protection program? Like, I don't know. I first entered cross code uh, as part of the witness protection program. There's also these little conversations you can listen into. Again, they're not needed, but it is an absolutely amazing touch. They really help set the tone of the game and make the environment feel way more alive. This is an MMO, so this is very common for the things you would see. We then go into our first dungeon after all this, and lo and behold, all the puzzle elements are here that probably could have been taught here but we learned about all these in the ship for some reason anyways after some easy puzzle solving we get to the boss who is a pushover and we're introduced to the best mechanic in the game so far the circuit mechanic this is actually pretty cool as i'm a big fan of spidering talent trees like path of exile and i think this is a big bonus for people who love to grind and level up an expansive skill tree so if you like this this alone could be a reason you like this game after we get out of the dungeon, we're met with two very interesting characters. An overzealous edgelord who accuses us of cheating and their more calm friend that just rolls their eyes at the whole situation and just keeps going because he knows his friend is crazy. And this is a side note, it might have gone unnoticed by most players, but the actual attention to detail in the inflection and emotion on these characters instead of just using static images is absolutely amazing. It really sells how high strung and ridiculous this specific character is and I absolutely love it. We then get to go to the Rookie Harbor and now the game decides to start allowing us to skip tutorials for some reason, I don't know why. By this logic I end up skipping all the tutorials that pop up after this point because if it's not forced or explained by Mr. Exposition then it can't be that important, right? Hopefully I don't regret this choice. We explore a bit, introduced to the concept of side quests, and we even fall out the back door of a bar. Uh... Uh, what? The cheekiness and feel of all these things right at the start really make me want to see what other funny interactions and story the game has to offer. And this is around the time I get to the two hour mark and I stop playing after the Schneider character is introduced. So let's jump into whether I actually would refund this or not. So game mechanics and approachability. The game mechanics seem basic at first, but there seems to be a level of depth available later on, it definitely caught my interest and made me want to get to the other potential mechanics. As far as whether these can be enjoyed by gamers of all skill levels, it would definitely appear so. There is a lot of difficulty sliders in this game. You could probably make it story mode if you really just wanted to enjoy the very basic story the game seems to have. Moving on to stories and character, like I said, the story does seem pretty basic, but it kept me entertained enough. Some characters were absolutely boring, while others had great dialogue that made me laugh out loud or smile at the overall situation. Visuals and audio, everything from the beginning to the end of the 2-hour mark are impressive. The visuals reminded me of Chrono Trigger and even some old early 2000s 2D free-to-play MMOs I used to play. It really felt like I was running around a 2D MMO. The choice of music and timing of it all was well done. At all times, it felt the tone was nailed. I was very immersed just from the music alone. Overall, the game made me wanting to play more. The most alluring part was the interesting characters that I did get to see, and the potential of expanded combat mechanics later on, with a palatable amount of visuals that were pleasing to the eye and a great choice of music in the background. I would definitely not refund this game. It's worth a try if you enjoy a nice RPG from what I can see. 